Hello, this is ASEAN Movie Pass Talks number 10. I am here with Adriana Rosati. Hello. And uh, Ruben Linares. Hi. And uh, today we are going to speak about a Filipino action film that uh, is screening on Netflix, has been is still going on, uh, By Bust by Eric Mati. Uh, a rather interesting action film because it kind of kick-started a surge of action films from both from Asian countries, but also from a number of other Asian ones where the protagonists the protagonist is uh, is a woman. We had uh, uh, Maria Fury. We will not die tonight, and uh, probably the most famous one uh, in the series. Let's say the Korean the villainess. Uh, so, uh, Ruben, what what do you think is the appeal of having a female protagonist in an action film? Um, well, since um... Since I've seen the villainess a couple of uh, weeks ago, and I, and of course for this podcast uh, rewatched by Bust, um, I have to say there are a couple of uh, things that I find very appealing in a within a genre that is traditionally, if you think of let's say, the very male or masculine. An 80s action flicks. It is something that is, um, even though there is, as you said, a rise in these in the female protagonists, it's still quite rare. And those kind of films, they traditionally also have a, a tough time with an audience, especially with a mainstream audience. Even though I see the appeal, especially if you think of a female protagonist in a male environment, which we have in By Bust, where we have a um, a cop that has to um, take charge and has to, um, you know, prove herself with the, in this in this uh, police unit in this in this um, um, drug enforcement unit. It is quite interesting to to see that, and because on the one hand side she is still somewhat an outsider, even though she is implemented in the team. But um, it is a very inter- it is a very interesting starting starting point for for any for any kind of film because at one point at one time you don't actually expect this person to be to put it a, in a very let's say banal way to to kick ass sort of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in an interview I had with him, uh, Eric Mati told me that he thinks the presence of a female protagonist in such films actually softens the film in a way like let's say tones down the whole testosterone uh, let's say that is usually associated with action films sometimes i think it becomes obvious that there is also a kind of sex appeal let's say with having a female protagonist you can see it in some movies that the the protagonist is being seen in that kind of way although it's not this the case. This is not the case with Bybust. Uh, Adriana, what do you think? Would would you prefer to see an action film with a female or a male protagonist? Well, I don't mind. I enjoy them both. I like action movies, and uh, but definitely I, the appeal. I agree with Ruben that is uh, a part of the appeal is is the, is, a, is a change of of scenery uh, because the majority of action heroes are. Uh, are men, uh, but also, uh, yeah, and also I, um, I think the um, what you were saying about Eric Matti interview, uh, and I, I think that it's also part of the uh, the appeal to the public is actually that the public now has got lots of uh, the, pa- pa- big part of the audience is women as well, uh, and and so. Um, it's definitely uh, something that goes towards the, uh, the thing, and um, and also yeah, I um, 
I, I can't really pinpoint was the, the the appeal, but definitely uh, is uh, is is quite is something quite um, powerful to see uh, a woman taking charge and uh, and and also they they especially for example like in few. Uh, uh, there is also a, a family element, you know, a motherly element of this uh, protecting the, 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 the child at all cost. Uh, it's something almost uh, a bit, um, like animal instinct kind of uh, thing. Um, uh, and also, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the disruptive image from the damsel in distress, <laughs> they usually are the, the female uh, um, character in action movies, they are saved by the men. Uh, I wanna, I wanna point out also uh, one, uh, <clears throat> one uh, um, character that, uh, that, that is quite relevant for me. There is, the, is uh, Alicia in The Raid 2, uh, Julie Estelle, the, the character with the, the famous number of the hammer. Uh, and she is quite, uh, what I was saying before, powerful because it's a disrupting kind of, she's very violent and it's a very, uh, uh, very powerful image. Also, another thing is that uh, um, maybe for Hollywood it wasn't the case, but in Asian movies there were lots of, not lots, but a few female uh, action uh, character and leads in in the in, in the, for example, in the Hong Kong uh, martial arts like uh, Cheng Pei Pei in uh, uh, Come Drink with Me. <coughs> and later uh, Michelle Yeo. Uh, so, you know, it, at the time, maybe Hong, uh, Hollywood was a bit behind, but um, uh, Hong Kong was uh, quite ahead. And even King Hu had lots of, quite few films with female martial arts <clears throat> lead character. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a sort of revamp probably, and very welcome. Yeah, yeah, and since you mentioned uh, Julia Estelle from uh, the Raid Two, I have to say that she was uh, her part was really popular, and now there is a new movie I think where she is going to be the main protagonist. Her character, I don't remember exactly what she had a nickname in the movie. I don't remember exactly, but there is a the new movie of the Raid series will be based on her. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, even the even the some of the female characters you think of uh, a film like Battle Royale. Um, I can't remember the name the name of the character, but um, there was one actress that was also that Quentin Tarantino cast in the first Kill Bill film, and she had a very very famous fight with uh, Uma Thurman. And I think it and in one of the interviews he said after I watched Battle Royale and I watched her and I watched her character. I, um, I said I gotta have her for this role, and it's I, again I can't remember the name of the actress. Shame on me for that. But it's uh, the actor Yama. It's the, her, the, her, the character is named Gogo in the in Kill Bill, and her actual name is Chiaki Kuriyama. Yeah, but if you see her fight with Yuma Thurman in that scene, you can't for, you can't <clears> forget <throat> it. And it's something, and in a way, it's something similar with uh, um, Anne Curtis here because um, it's not like when you see her for the first time, it's not like you don't expect her to to not be a part of this unit. But I think when for a Filipino audience, it might be something somewhat mm -hmm. of a surprise because it's. It's a very different kind of role for her, isn't it? I've read somewhere that she's had has done a lot of romantic comedy yeah, yeah. or something like that. So it's I think for a Filipino audience, maybe not so much for a Western audience, but for a Filipino audience or Asian audience, it, it's kind of surprising to see her do that character, play that character. Yeah, yeah. It, it was the first time that she she did the character like that. She always had, as you said. Romantic roles and uh, in this, uh, yeah, Filipino production, and and um, yeah, it must have been a shock for <laughs> for a Filipino the local audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we're gonna talk about the actors uh, a bit later on, uh, but just to begin a bit properly, let's say, Ruben, uh, would you like to tell us a bit about the story of the film? 
Yes, of course. I'll try my very best. Um, so the movie starts off with a with an interrogation scene where a where two cops are interrogating a shall I say a small time drug dealer who gives them information about a a very big a huge drug dealer called Biggie Chen, and um, they and he gives them a location which is kind of strange because it's a district in Manila which is supposedly um, free of any free of drugs or clean so to speak but he says that there is a that somewhere there Big Chen is, is hiding and um, that's where the PDEA the Filipino Drug Enforcement Agency comes in a special unit um, is supposed is supposed to lead an advance or let's say a buy bust operation so there's a supposed deal going on which they're going to bust and arrest uh, Big Chen and um, once they are in the area where the um, where the buy is supposed to take place, it doesn't work because Biggie Chen isn't there, and he says the dealer has to come has to come to him. So they are more or less, to use the metaphor, they are they are they are traveling into the lion's den, into into this into this district. And uh, one of the team members is, as we said, uh, played by Anne Curtis. Her name is. Nina Manigan, if I'm not mis if, I'm, if I remember the name correctly, and there is a sort of pass with her. She has led an operation which has gone quite quite badly for her. She has a certain reputation that she is the bringer of bad luck or something like that, and she has to prove herself or wants to prove herself. Um, however, the by bust operation goes horribly wrong. The dealers or the antis enforcers and thugs, they know the um, officers are there and they um, basically seal off the whole district and they are starting to hunt these people, the, the officers down. And just before the hunt uh, sort of starts or before the first um, shoot shootouts happen, um, Nina, picks up a radio transmission from the drug dealer saying something about um, a certain person called Judas, who is, as the name suggests, a, tra a traitor and who has betrayed the, oper the operation. And she suspects one of the um, officers, one of, her, one of her team members, to be that person, to be that traitor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, the, uh, the script reminds kind of like the raid in a way, like that there is the protagonist with the past and that there is like uh, a preparation until they get, uh, the protagonist get into a place where they have to fight scores of, enemy, of enemies. You can see like a kind of uh, similarity there, you think, Adriana? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, the, well, uh, this film reminds me of many other films, but without taking anything out, out because it's, it's, one, um, it's a one terrific film. Uh, but uh, yeah, it reminds me of The Raid and also uh, the No Asian, but it re reminds me also of films like Escape from New York and uh, The Warriors. Uh, this um, sort of um, claustrophobic feeling in being trapped in a place and you have to escape. <laughs> and um, it's a great, great setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Ruben? I also agree with Adriana. I got to applaud the film, to be honest, not necessarily perhaps for originality, but for the but for the use of uh, of the setting. Um, I like the film because uh, even though it is a, I think in many reviews compared to, as Adriana said, to the raid, which is kind, which is kind of true. But I like the fact that instead of going vertical, which ha which the raid has done when you have, because they had to travel through the top of the, of the tower, so to speak, to um, have their boss fight. I know it's video game language that I'm just using, but um, so to speak. And this is a this is horizontal. And because of that, because of the dimension of that, it's it's more messy, it's more chaotic to to say to, to and and it gives you 
a very different uh, texture and very different dynamic, which I kind of like for by bust. And, um, to, and I think Eric Mati and his uh, cinematographer, um, they do that, they use that setting and use this horizontal approach quite interesting, quite interestingly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, okay. Obviously, the location was one of the greatest assets of the film. Uh, this uh, labyrinth kind of slums, it's uh, rather impressive. And uh, the way Eric Martin and his cinematographer use it to create this sense of uh, claustrophobia for the characters is pretty impressive. It makes the film. It's obviously a thriller in that regard. There is much agony and uh, you can feel the angst of the characters as they're trying to survive in such a setting, which is, as Ruben said, quite uh, video game-like. Mm -hmm. Adriana, what did you think of the slums setting? Well, yeah, it's, uh, as I said, it's got this claustrophobic feeling. Uh, it's fantastic, and it is a bit, uh, it reminds me a lot of a, um, a, a video game, uh, one of those shoot all kind of games. Also, because uh, uh, I think that um, the, we, we will talk about the social commentary, but uh, I think the, what the film I want to show is the uh, fighting crime in a criminal way doesn't really work. And so um, there is this moment that it's everybody against everybody. Uh, and so it's just uh, get through and, and shoot everything. So that everything and everyone. Uh, so it's, it, that, that, that's what remind me of a, uh, reminded me of a video game. Uh, also, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the setting is fantastic. And uh, I think the, the, the best thing of this film is the, is the way the, all the production work together. It's the ensemble of uh, cinematography, uh, props, uh, choreography, sounds. The, the, the sounds, is, I think uh, it was amazing as well. Um, for example, um, you know, because the, the whole film has got these cracking voices in the uh, air pieces of the police uh, communicating through the, to, through the radio. And so you got this cracking, you don't really understand, and it's all quite uh, annoying after a while, but annoying, like uh, it's disorientating uh, for, for the viewer. And so they create uh, even more a sense of claustrophobia. And then uh, as, every time the, 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 the character go near a house, the, the, the sound pick up the, the voices of the people inside the house and then and the, the, the music from the radio. Uh, the music is a big mix, uh, uh, but it, it also include Filipino pop coming from the radio. So it's, it's, it's an amazing ensemble, mm -hmm. teamwork. I think technically, I definitely agree with Adriana. I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, but when I was watching the film for the second time, I'll try to uh, reconstruct which road they are actually taking to get out of there. And I couldn't, and I, for the for the best of me, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I mean, it for some, it, sometimes it sound, it looks like they were they were going in circles. They were do, they were doing one step forward, two steps back, and. You couldn't really tell where which they are going. So this sense of disorientation, this of this labyrinth, is really, really something that is not just there for the characters. They are trying to find their way, but also for the viewer. It's it's a very, very yeah. almost visceral experience that you are in that labyrinth and you don't know which way which way out. All you know is you want to get out. It's dangerous. It's dirty. It's it's. Uh, it's a place that you don't that you don't want to be in. At the end, it's even it's even it's, it looks like it's flooding over there. So you, you just want to get out of there. I think the most impressive shot of the film, or one of the most impressive shots of the film, is um, later on when you have a newscast um, saying that this and this has happened in this district, and there is this a um, long shot. I think it is. Or wide shot of the whole area, and, the, and you can see the whole the camera panning over the area, and you got yes, this is where they went through all this. This is where they went through, mm -hmm. and you see, and you hear the death toll, and you go like, 
really? That looks like more. That looks like a much larger, uh, uh, much larger or much higher number of people that they have that they have that have lost their lives due to you know the shootout that has happened, mm-hmm. which uh, which which as uh, Adriana said links to the uh, social commentary that we're going to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, actually this the whole slum era, if I am not mistaken, was actually built. It's a built set that it was built on an abandoned school that was burned down. It's about eight thousand square meters, so it's kind of big. You can say it's small, but the way the movie progresses, it makes it feel even like huge. Like you, you will never get out there. You get that sense almost immediately. They get into the slums. Also, Eric Matti mentioned that uh, he got the inspiration for the film that uh, during a shooting of another film that was happening in the kind of similar slum area, a drunk man appeared and started causing trouble for the crew. And uh, when they start, the crew started looking for a way out, they couldn't find an exit in this labyrinth type of another slum. And uh, that is what gave him the inspiration to shoot this film like that. And uh, this kind of Anxiousness and helplessness, I think, is communicated excellently in the film through Eric Mathis' direction and the cinematography. You can really feel the angst. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. As I said, it's uh, it's disorientating. It's uh, uh, um, uh, make you anxious uh, and uh, slightly annoying as well. Uh, I, I, well, I was do as um, Ruben said uh, when I was watching it for the second time. I was I was actually wondering if uh, if it was worth doing like a draw of where they were going because it's really. Uh, yeah, it's really you. You lost the, the track immediately, um, and uh, and in general, it's obvious to me that the film after it gets into the slum, it's it's chaotic, right? There is chaos there, like there is not. I don't know how to say that. You can see the chaos, but it's actually kind of regulated. Like Eric Mati knew how to implement this chaos in order to have a pretty. Not exactly precise, but uh, let's say measured atmosphere. Very difficult. You have to see it to understand it. It's like, I don't know, it's a true trait to implement chaos in such an artful cinematic way. I don't know, Ruben? I think what I um, take away from this, and I mean, there are two ways of understanding the film. You can watch this as an action film, and it's 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 fine that way. You get your you get your shootouts, you get your martial arts, you get everything. But what I was taking away took away from that was this uh, this idea of a lawless space within society, a place that is uh, should be uh, controlled by the state. But actually, there is this space within society, which uh, basically within within a city that you should that you should know, like the back of your hand. But it's actually not something you know. It's actually a place without law. And Mati, among other filmmakers who are doing this sort of hyper realism in their action films. They sort of make you feel that these lawless spaces, even though I'm showing you a very heightened and very um, noir-like uh, type of situation, these places exist. Make no mistake, especially when you have these um, this other faction here. You, I mean, you have the police officers, you have the um, you have the drunken. Um, drug lords and his and his people, but the one faction we haven't talked about are the inhabitants, who are also a very very important faction, and they are suffering from the violence of both sides. And uh, I think this is a mass a, st- a masterful stroke that he does here to implement those people here because they are a very powerful force in that in that in that uh, regard. They have they have to live in these in these lawless spaces and to portray these and to portray the people who live there that's quite interesting for biobust in the case of biobust 
Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is, like uh, we discussed uh, last week about uh, Joko and was in Petigore, what a uh, number of directors from uh, ASEAN countries are doing is implementing uh, significant social messages through genre cinema. As Joko Anwar did it with the horror in Betigora. I feel Eric Matt is doing the same with By Bust. It is an action film, but the social commentary is also quite intense. Uh, for example, the critique on uh, the war of drugs on Duterte and uh, police corruption, which, according to Mati, are two interconnected uh, topics, uh, are quite uh, intense in the film. Okay, maybe they are not exactly in your face. Sometimes the comments are a bit subtle, like in the ending song. I don't know if you remember the song, but I think that was a real punch toward Duterte. And... Uh, I think this is what makes this film so special, the combination of action and social commentary. Uh, Adriana, okay, sorry, Adriana, so just before, if it's not exactly known what the war on drugs is, is like President Duterte of uh, yeah. Philippines in uh, June 30 of 2016 urged citizens to kill suspected criminals and drug addicts and also gave permission to the police to shoot whoever they consider to be a drug, a drug dealer. Now, four years later, humanitarian organizations from all over the world are considering what is happening in Manila, in particular, as a kind of uh, mass, uh, massacre, let's say, almost. The yeah. level of incidents are that long. Sorry, hi, Adriana. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying this, that Duterte uh, in, in 2016 <clears throat> gave uh, carte blanche to, to the police to shoot indiscriminately, and, uh, and that resulted in the deaths of thousands of, of people, including civilians, police, uh, everybody, uh, not just the suspects and the, the drug dealers. Uh, so it was uh, it was a real massacre, and uh, and uh, Eric Matti was always quite clear uh, about his political stance against uh, Duterte, Duterte, and uh, and I, I think the film, yeah, is 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 very good because I I, I think that this view is is quite there, but it is a film that is very enjoyable as a, as a terrific action movies as well. Uh, but the, 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 the critic is there, uh, you know, the, this uh, space, as Ruben was saying, you know, no law space of the slums that, by the way, it reminds me exactly a, a bit, a lot of um, uh, the, the Kowloon walled city, just because at the moment I'm writing something about it. Um, uh, this sort of liminal space in in, in society, um, and uh, and 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 when <clears throat> when uh, the police uh, the the, the spot uh, the you know Nina spot is is lost in in this uh, uh, in this slum, uh, and they are fighting against uh, the, the the drug chase by dr the drug dealers and also the exasperated uh, inhabitants of the slums, uh, and then. You know, there is this uh, is sort of borderline funny that you you got this very uh, very uh, gory uh, fights with the with the locals and lots of women because lots of housewives and 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 very uh, some sometime very slashy slash kind of uh, killings and uh, uh, and you sort of not you you lose. Not the direction, not only the direction, the physical direction, but you also, so sometimes you lose the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the point about the morality of this. If it's who is the body, who is the, uh, who is the good, um, you know, you, you, you care for the policemen because they are really in trouble, but you, you care for the, for the, for the inhabitants as well. So it's, um, it's very, I think it's very disorientating also in, in that way. And uh, I think it's a, it's a way to say, Again, uh, the, the, um, it's a big hyperbole of, of the consequences of, of, of Duterte's uh, 
fight to crime in a criminal way. Uh, and um, so, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I've lost the track, but yeah, that, 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 that is the, uh, the, the, there is lots of commentary and quite strong, but also uh, very well disguised. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Ruben, about the social aspect of the film? Uh, well, um, Adriana has said many things, so I have just a few additions. As I said, this is a film that, um, like many action films, uh, lives on the, a certain kind of texture. When you see the images of the streets or of this so of this neighborhood of this district, um, I have I've rarely seen apart from let's uh, apart from films like for example, the villainous or let's or something like the wailing, which is so dirty. You can it's not poverty is not just an abstract concept in that film. It is. It is there, just like crime and suffering and death is not a, an abstract concept. It is quite there. It is a, it is something that um, he puts on he puts on the screen within this action, um, within this uh, within this action film framework. And this is quite, and this is something that is quite unique, quite interesting. Even though you are aware of the fact that it is a somewhat heightened, that it's a genre film, it's enter it's entertaining, it's supposed to be, but at the same time, um, you get the feeling, as I said with uh, the lawless spaces, you get the feeling that there is a glimpse of reality that you are, that you are getting, especially with the addition of the locals or the inhabitant, uh, the inhabitants. You get the feeling that these people they are really suffering this is something that they live through every live through every day this level of as adriana said this level of disorientation this level of chaos you don't know whether you can whether your daughter will live through this night as we can see in the film there is this uh, leader of the uh, group of locals who has this who has this daughter and he's afraid of for her life you are, you are basically not even you are safe when you are asleep. There is this scene when the cops are walking on the uh, on the roof and they see people uh, lying uh, on 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 the bed or on mattresses or whatever. So there is no safety, no uh, no escape from that. And this is the feeling that you're getting, adding to this claustrophobic feeling that you already have in this in this uh, um, in this setting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Well, I can, well, one last thing. I think that Eric Matti also want to uh, to show that the police, or at least these police, uh, is uh, is uh, that they are puppets as well uh, in the hands of a, a puppeteer, and uh, uh, and also the, the, the I think the uh, you know he, he plays that. Um, for example, uh, the, the head of the sport is, is, is and, and one of the the, the police women are a couple, and uh, and 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 so there is a. Uh, I think that this is like to 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 inject some humanity in, even in this um, lost police squad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And. Uh... Okay, the social commentary in the film is quite intense, but uh, okay, the action part is, is more intense. I think that's obvious after a point. Uh, and uh, here I think we have some of the best action scenes and choreography we have seen in the latest years. Uh, uh, Sean Sisson, the uh, action choreographer, has done an impressive job. They look, uh, okay, they are kind of, they are messy. We don't see like, Shaw Brothers, like this is not choreography, this is fighting. You can feel that. You can feel that thing as you watch, you know, normal people fighting, the, fighting with the policeman and the policeman with the drug dealers and everyone. Uh, so what did you think about this aspect, Ruben, the action part? I actually wouldn't even call it fighting. I'd say it's brawling. Brawling, yeah. yeah what, they're, what they're doing. It's uh, especially when you think of the fight that uh, Brandon Vera, I think is his name, the MMA fighter, where he's in, he was by the, by the apart from uh, 
um, Miss Curtis. He was perhaps my favorite part. I like him a lot. He's a he's a he's a strong strong uh, presence here, and um, I like the uh, first of all. I like the uh, fact that these uh, the messiness and decay and the chaos of the setting that we just talked about is mirrored uh, in the fight scenes. It's they they fight with. Uh, guns with sticks with stones whatever comes to whatever comes to their aid and i like this approach to to the fighting to fighting or in this case brawling it is believable it's authentic it's at the same time it's very very entertaining and there are even some aspects where it's some where it's a where it's always a little bit kind of over the top I'm not sure if you remember the scene with the shears. Yeah, yeah. That is, I mean, that is, that's, uh, that was what, that's what one of the goriest moments. I'm not sure if you, in the edition that you, that you have seen, uh, you can see it in Germany. It was, uh, I think, it, a little bit uh, toned down here. But uh, wow, this is this is almost bordering on. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if I can say cartoon like. In that mm -hmm. context, but it certainly seems like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I had an interview with the action choreographer Sean Sison actually, and he said that this was one of his hardest work because he had to do this thing where all of these elements that you described are there, like you have all realism, you have this cartoony style, and uh, also the action is impressive. Uh, Adrian, what do you think about the action? Uh, yeah, the, the action is, is terrific. It's, it's, uh, yeah, and also um, the, the, when we, we talk about choreography, as Luen said, it's not an elegant choreography. I mean, it's, we're not talking about martial arts, but uh, exactly it was a, uh, a fight with everything. Um, uh, quite funny that they use all sorts of things, uh, kitchen utensil and stuff, and um, yeah, and he's the 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 thing that I think is really good that is is relentless. Uh, it, it never finished. There is no no stop, and they use as I said all sorts of things, and uh, then there is the <clears throat> the there is this famous uh, one cut uh, following uh, three minutes one cut scene following uh, <clears throat> sorry <coughs> Uh, for following Nina uh, going around up and down uh, uh, a building and and <laughs> fighting people and uh, yeah and it's three minutes which is very long uh, and and just before that there is another scene that I really like the, there is a, a, an alley at some point that is flooded and. Um, and uh, Enrico is in, in in this alley, and they all have the, the water up to here. And they and and is there is a, a shot from 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 above, and you see this corridor of water with uh, Rico fighting one after the other, one after the other, a bit like the the, the famous corridor in Old Boy. <laughs> and it's uh, that, that was very good. It's just before the the three minutes, so it's really relentless, and it's. Uh, is uh, amazing. I understand that it must have been a, a very hard job to do, even if it's uh, if it's a, a dirty kind of fight. Yeah, yeah. This uh, three minute scene, I feel also it's like probably the most impressive in the film, and you can see how difficult it must have been to shoot this thing. Also, it's raining while all this chaos is happening, so it must have been really difficult. Also to record the sound and to have it. Yeah. But this thing is uh, is exceptional. It's so uh, great. I don't know how did you feel about it, Ruben. Um. To be honest, I think this was this apart from the scenes that we mentioned is also my scene, my favorite scene because as I said, I like the character. I like the character of Rico. I like also his. Um, I'm not sure if it, if you can say it's an obsession, belief, or fetish. He has this talisman with him and it says, I, I cannot die. I can't die here. We are all safe. 
And even though it's even though at the beginning it, you feel like it's sort of silly that he says that specifically because he's such a strong guy, it's it's a it's a kind of person you wouldn't want to be in a fight with. So most certainly, but um, and he said, you don't need this kind of protection. I mean, look at you. And this scene where where he's as Adrian says fighting, I don't know how many people he's fighting. He has the water up onto, I don't know his uh, his hips or something like that. And you are really cheering for him. At least I found myself to be silently cheering mm -hmm. for this guy. Please survive that. You have to. You have to. I mean, you're wearing a talisman after all. You should be. You should be the one surviving. I think it's a. It says a lot about um, the way he shoots the scene and about the sympathy for these for these characters, despite all their flaws. At least the, the police officers here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, since we mentioned that scene, maybe uh, we can also come back to the acting aspect of the film. Uh, as you all mentioned, Anna Curtis, Anna Curtis was not used to this kind of roles. She was mostly playing in uh, uh, romantic comedies and romantic drama of sorts. Uh, okay, so she had, uh, as far as I know, she had the... Uh, extensive training for months in martial arts and uh, the use of gun. Uh, but also what I liked about her part is that she doesn't look like, I, I don't know how to say, she still looks like the girl next door. She's not like the way usually this action heroes look like, like let's say the protagonist of uh, the villainess. And uh, the fact that she doesn't look like that, actually she managed to turn it around to one of her biggest traits in the film, like it makes the way she reacts more more believable. At least that is what I got from her role. Adriana? Uh, yeah, I've, I've lost the sound of the, the last bit that you said, but <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I I really I really like her. Uh, is she um, I, uh, I don't know. I, I I thought that she looked very um, very natural, but also she's got a very, um, I don't know, she, 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 I think that she expressed very well uh, the grudge that the character uh, have, uh, you know, she come from the, the character come from from uh, from a previous experience where her, her sport has been wiped out, and and she's uh, uh, she she she's convinced that it was a uh, the a mall, uh, the, you know, the, the the work of a mall, uh, uh, and uh, and and despite everybody is telling that it wasn't, uh, she's got this trauma in her and I, I, I thought that she the, 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 the actress was great in 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 uh, in conveying this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ruben about uh, Anne Curtis what impressed me most was the, um, the the emotional development that her character goes through you can see at the very beginning as Adriana said she is um, she is tough, but at the same time, she is somewhat insecure because of what has happened to happened to her. She knows she has there was something that was that went wrong in the, in the last uh, in the last task she was last task she was given. She has caused misery. She has caused death. I'm not sure if it's ever expressed exactly what has happened here, but it, I think she has caused a. Um, she blames herself for what has what has happened. And this is the starting point. And throughout the uh, film, you can see her being um, somewhat going through the same level of, of disorientation that we that we experience as the as the viewer. Then we go. Then we see her um, getting this this rage within us. This this willingness. I'm not. I'm not going to be the one who will die today. I'm not going to be the one who's going to give up my team again or do or who will do the wrong thing again and at the very end you can see this level of rage inside of him, perhaps even frustration because um because the situation is as it is i don't, don't want to go into spoiler territory here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And uh, okay, regarding the rest of the cast, uh, okay, uh, Brandon Vera is a presence. You know, okay, he, he's huge. He's like this is a this is a former uh, martial arts champion. He goes into the film, and you can see what he's doing there. He doesn't have to do so much because his presence is already impressive enough. So uh, in that regard, I would like to focus a bit on. Uh, the main villain, which is Ario Ataide, who plays Rico, because I felt that was also very impressive performance in the film. Particularly his monologue during the end, I feel is one of the best points of the film. I don't know what uh, what do you think about his acting, Adriana? Yeah, um, the, um, the 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 what is his name Mario Atayase sorry uh, the Biggie Chan character is uh, is great because uh, first of all uh, you know he appears for a very brief moment of the film um, and uh, uh, but he's a very important character not only because he's the uh, because he's the boss of the of the drug dealers, the big boss, but also because uh, um, because uh, in the monologue that you mentioned, he, he express uh, uh, the, 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 the the social commentary of the film, uh, and uh, uh, he's a great villain because uh, first of all, because his look is is quite unusual. He's got he looks a bit like. Uh, a schoolboy uh, more than uh, what you could imagine as a as a big drug dealer, uh, and uh, and it's got this sort of psychopath kind of um, look. And then the, his monologue uh, is great because it's a sort of a, it's like a lecture magistralis about uh, the, uh, the 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 situation between police and drug dealers and the society and everything. And uh, it's it's, uh, it's a great point of the film. Uh, Okay. Uh, <clears throat> about him? Um, I also like his uh, performance uh, as, as the villain because uh, unlike many villains in action films who are somewhat forgettable, he isn't, even though he has that very, he hasn't that much screen time. You get the feeling that he's always there, even though he isn't, if you, if you know what I mean. You get the feeling that this is his territory, this is his turf, and no one's going to tell him what to do here. But in the end, he gets, he has this monologue and he basically tells, tells, tells Nina what she has, what she has already suspected. Something like, you know, we are just puppets here, like Adriana said. We are just a, um, let's say, pawns in a much bigger chess game. And we are just being moved around. And if you kill me, well, somebody else will will probably replace me. Something like that. It's a very, very powerful and very memorable uh, villain from the looks and from what he says. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. I think we've covered the film uh, ex exhaustingly, even. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Is anyone wants uh, Ruben? You want to add anything before we close? Nope. Adriana. Well, a little thing maybe about the music uh, that is quite good. You know, there is a uh, there is a mix of rock, heavy metal, dub, uh, Filipino pop, and everything, and it's all. Uh, uh, they fit very well the whole ensemble that we were describing earlier with all the other production yeah. and it's very good. Okay, so uh, this is for this week's discussion. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like these talks, you can also subscribe to our channel. We're doing one of these every week. Still don't know what we're going to have next week, but we're going to have something and uh, we hope that you will be back here or wherever this is. So from uh, Panos Kodzathanasis and uh, Adriana. Adriana, bye, thank and, you for watching. And Ruben. Bye, thank you for watching. And see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.